Hello and welcome to another Moog demo library. In today's video, we're going to be exploring Spectrovox. Spectrovox is unique in that it straddles the line between instrument and processor, and for this example, we're going to explore using it like a synthesizer voice. Now, in many ways, the voice architecture on Spectrovox is similar to a classic Moog subtractive voice, but the one big difference is rather than just having a low pass filter, you actually have 10 filters. You have eight bandpass filters, a high pass filter, and a low pass filter. So this offers a lot of unique tonality not typically found on a Moog synthesizer. Another thing to note is that the envelope is decay only, so there's no adjusting the attack stage, but you can also use an external envelope if that's something that you need. For this example, I'm going to be using Grandmother to control Spectrovox, but you can use any keyboard that has a CV gate output to do the exact same thing. So let's begin by patching the keyboard output on Grandmother to the Volt Per Octave input on Spectrovox. And I'm going to patch the gate output to the trigger input on Spectrovox. I'm going to put it into ARP mode for now. And let's give a listen to how it sounds. So you can hear I have a little bit of sweeping happening here, and that's because the LFO is currently turned up to adjust the spectral shift. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that down, tighten the envelope up a bit. And now the first thing I want to do is I'm going to turn all the filter bands down except for the first filter. So now, with this setup, we have something that's very similar to a classic Moog voice. The spectral shift control actually controls all 10 filters and moves them in parallel, but if I'm only listening to the first band, what it's going to do is just sweep the cutoff of my low pass filter. So right now we're listening to a sawtooth wave. I can also flip it up to a pulse, and then get a range from square to different sort of pulse widths. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn the low pass filter down and I'm going to just listen to the high pass filter. Turn the resonance up a little bit. So as you can hear, the high pass filter is tuned a little bit high, meaning that with the spectral shift all the way down, we're still cutting out some of our low end. But now an interesting thing that we can do is if we turn our low pass filter back up, and we leave all the bandpass filters down, I'm going to get something that sounds similar to a phase effect. It's kind of like a very big notch filter that's sweeping the low pass and high pass at the same time. I'll turn the resonance up a little bit. Now what I can do is if I leave spectral shift at noon and I turn up the shift LFO amount, I can automate that sweep. Get this very pleasing sound. And I can adjust the rate of that shift. All the way up to some intense audio rate shifting. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn the low pass and high pass filters down. And I'm going to bring up the lowest band pass filter. So you can hear it's doing what you would expect from a band pass filter sweeping around as the LFO is moving the spectral shift. But now I'm going to start stacking some of the band pass filters to listen to the tones that we can get. Here we wind up with this almost formant-like tonal quality that's quite interesting as all of the bandpass filters are moving around in parallel. And as I increase the resonance, that feel is going to become more and more dramatic. So in many ways, this can feel like a comb filter being swept around or something that's phaser adjacent still. And then I can add in my low pass and high pass filters again. And 
and then we can use the spectral shift control to offset that sweep. So another unique thing that we can do is while the VCA mode is set to EG, the VCA CV jack actually controls the amplitude of the envelope so it can act like a velocity control. So if we want, we can actually take the onboard LFO, feed it into the VCA CV, and then get something that's like a tremolo. <laughs> And if you have a control or some means of offsetting that signal, because right now this is bipolar, so it's going to push it down into silence. But if we're able to shift that signal up a little bit in terms of the voltage it's putting out, you'll get something that doesn't result in as many silences or as dramatic of a sort of chopping effect. And we can also get some interesting amplitude modulation that way as well. So as you can hear, Spectrovox is actually quite a flexible and unique synthesizer voice and great fun to include in your compositions when you're not using it to process an external signal.